<laughs> Welcome back to Logic, ladies and gentlemen. You know what this class is for. This class is so we can learn how to recognize bad arguments and make good arguments. In the last episode, we learned what logic is, what an argument is, what a premise and a conclusion is. Now, in this class, we're going to go into recognizing arguments and how to grade arguments. But first, there's a pop quiz. Question number one. What is logic for th from the last video? Well, logic is the science that evaluates arguments. Question number two, what is an argument? Well, an argument is when somebody tries to prove something. Words that are intended to prove a point. Okay, and a premise, what's a premise? Well, a premise is, is content in the argument, and it's the basically the evidence that leads to the point that they're trying to prove which would be the conclusion. The conclusion is the point that the person is trying to prove. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm no expert video maker, but I want this video series playlist to be quick, reduce the time for learning from months into minutes, which is very difficult to do uh, for me. you got a, a thick textbook. you only got so much time, so many words you can use to, to relay the information and hold hold the attention of the audience. Quite difficult, I think, to do. But I want to make it simple as well. You want to just learn the basics, the things that you're actually going to use in your day-to-day -day life. Uh, you don't need to learn all the technical stuff unless you want to be a logic professor. Also, it's going to be effective. You're going to be, hopefully, an expert. You'll be able to just recognize good arguments and bad arguments and provide good arguments as well, just like it would just come natural. And without further ado, let's jump right into recognizing arguments. And then we'll begin to grade the argument, whether it's a good argument or a bad argument. After all, you cannot evaluate or grade an argument unless you know it's an argument. How do you know it's an argument? Well, an argument's a group of words that are intended to prove a point. An argument will always have a premise and a conclusion. You can imagine the premises like falling dominoes. One premise to another premise to another premise, which leads to knocking over the inescapable truth of the conclusion. So the premise will claim to support the conclusion. Now they'll either do it implicitly or explicitly. If it's explicitly, it'll have words like therefore or wherefore, or the conclusion is this because of this. So to explicitly have words in there that show that they're inferring the conclusion based on the evidence. But there are some arguments that do not have premise or conclusion indicators. Remember we went over that last video. But they, So they will implicitly infer the conclusion. So they might use premise, premise, premise with no indicators and then conclusion, but you can evaluate the argument and see that the, it, the premises do implicitly infer the conclusion without the indicator word. You can just ask yourself, is this person trying to prove a point? If he's trying to prove a point, it's an argument. A good way to help you determine if the person is presenting an argument is to know what are not arguments. Some non-arguments, here's a key to help you remember what some non-arguments are. War, oh, what is it good for? W for warning, advice, report, or opinion. War oh. There are other things like illustrations and explanations as well. Somebody could just be giving you a warning like, do not drive fast around the corner at the end of Broadway Street. There's a pothole on the other side. You could run into it and flatten your tire. That happened to me last week. This is just an, uh, a warning. Same as advice. I would advise you to drive slow as you go around the corner at the end of Broadway Street. You don't want to hit the pothole, flatten your tire, etc. It's just a piece of advice. Or a report. Uh, Channel 4 News has reported that there's been 10 accidents at the end of Broadway Street as people ran into the pothole. Again, that's not an argument. It's just a report. Report from the, the Channel 4 News station. Or there's an opinion. In my opinion... The corner at the end of Broadway Street is very dangerous. There's a pothole as you go around the corner. 
and you could wreck, etc., etc. That's not an argument, that's just somebody's opinion. Okay, so remember these. War, oh, what is it good for? Warning, advice, report, or opinion. Warning, advice, report, or opinion is not an argument. An argument contains a premise and a conclusion. Someone's trying to prove something to you. They're not just giving you their opinion. They're not giving you their advice, but they want to prove a point to you. Now, here's something good to know about non-arguments, and that is we can take advantage of non-arguments. Because if you're a person who does not want to be proven wrong, if you have somebody who will scrutinize what you write or what you say, you can get in the habit of just giving your warning, advice, report, or opinion until you purposely present an argument. That way you cannot be proven wrong. You're just giving a piece of advice or a report from someone else or your opinion. And even on individual statements, statements are sentences that are either true or false, if you make a statement, then you are also, you open yourself up to be proven wrong. So try to not say statements if you don't want to be proven wrong, unless you're sure that you're right. What you can do is ask a lot of questions. Ask questions, ask questions, give advice, report, or opinions. Okay, moving right along. Now that we know how to recognize arguments, and one thing I forgot to mention is uh, key words or premise and conclusion indicators. Last video, that's a good way to recognize an argument. Let's jump right into grading arguments. Are grading arguments, I mean, are arguments good or bad? It's very important. Let's move right along here. Grading an argument, there's two things you need to do. Separate the premise and the conclusion. You already know that. Then examine the premises. Just zero in and focus on the premises. And when you examine the premises, ask two things. One, are the premises true? And two, do they support the conclusion? If you have an argument and the premise is not true, then the conclusion is not true. Or if you have an argument, the premises are true, but they don't support the conclusion, then the conclusion is not true. Well, in general. Well, it's not true based on this argument. The conclusion could be true, but not based on the argument, because the argument is contains a fallacy. And we'll talk about fallacies. What, well, what is a fallacy? If you find a premise that's not true or doesn't support the conclusion, you have found a fallacy, which is basically a defect in the argument. And I put this domino here. If you Imagine the premises like dominoes, one domino hitting the next one to the next one to the conclusion. Well, if you find a fallacy, you take out one of those dominoes, it's going to stop the domino effect. Or uh, a breadcrumb trail through the forest. If you're following each breadcrumb, tra breadcrumb to breadcrumb as premise to premise to premise leading to the conclusion, but you find a fallacy in the argument or a defect in the argument, now you've removed a breadcrumb and you lose track and it doesn't lead you to the conclusion some uh, memory devices there for you. Okay, so that's one of the key things to remember, is zero in on the premises. That's If you're going to find a weak spot, that's where you're going to find them. You're going to find them, separate conclusion from premises, and boom, go in for those premises. Remove the domino or remove a breadcrumb. Now these fallacies can be found in the form or the content. The form is how the argument is constructed. Is it constructed in a valid way? We'll get into that. Or is it found in the content, the information contained in the argument? Well, let's take a quick quiz here and a recap. What is logic? You got it. It's a science used to evaluate arguments. And an argument is when somebody is trying to prove a point. Arguments contain a premises, which is evidence that leads to the point that the person is trying to prove. And the conclusion is the point that the person is trying to prove. You know how to recognize an argument. How do you recognize an argument? You got it. Look for indicator words to find the premise and conclusion. If it has a premise and a conclusion, it's an argument. You also know what non-arguments are. Warning, advice, report, or opinion. You know how to grade arguments. First step, separate the premise and the conclusion. Then zero in on the premise. Ask yourself, are the premises true, and do they support the conclusion? 
Now it's time to practice. Now I know this is a lot to remember, but in time you'll, just, you'll have it down no problem. Here's a key to help you if we're going to practice. First step, find out if it's an argument. Next, separate the premise and conclusion, then focus in on the premise. Are they true and do they support the conclusion? Ready? Let us begin. Okay, we're going to grade this argument. Is it a good argument or a bad argument? Man-made global warming is a reality, says Dr. Arnold Fleming from UCLA. He says record high temperatures are recorded all over the globe and the ice cap is melting. Okay, is this an argument? Let us look for indicator words. Do we see any premises? Do we see the word because or since or as? Man-made global warming. I don't see any indicator words for conclusions either. Let's check if it's a non-argument. Waro, is it a warning advice report or opinion? Let's see. Man-made global warming is a reality, says. Okay, someone's saying here, Dr. Arnold Flemmer, he says record high temperatures. Okay, so this looks like a report. This is a report about something that Dr. Arnold from UCLA said. So this doesn't seem to be an argument. Let's go on to the next problem. Number two, let's find out if this is a good argument or a bad argument. Men usually have lower pitched voices than women because they have longer vocal cords. Longer vocal cords vibrate at a lower frequency than shorter ones. First step, is it an argument? Well, let's look for some indicator words. Let's try to find a premise and a conclusion. What is the conclusion? That's what I usually look for first. Men usually have lower pitched voices than women because... So next should be... That's an indicator word. Next should be the premise because the reason why they have longer vocal cords, longer vocal cords. Okay, so the conclusion seems to be men usually have longer pitched voices than women. So that's the point that the person is trying to make. Their evidence for this is longer vocal cords and vocal cords vibrate at a lower frequency, the longer ones than the shorter ones. Okay, so we, it is an argument. Now we separate the premise from the conclusion. We've done that. The conclusion is men usually have lower pitched voices than women. And the premises, the evidence to support that is because they have longer vocal cords. Now the next step would be the premises. Let's zero in on these premises. Are these premises true, and do they support the conclusion? Well, let's see. Okay, they have longer vocal cords. Do men have longer vocal cords? Well, how can we determine if that is true? Some ideas might. We can consult an authorized authority, maybe a doctor who specializes in vocal cords, or maybe someone who does autopsies. And they have a familiarization with the size of vocal cords. And we can compare them to men and women. And then the next premises, longer vocal cords vibrate at lower frequency. We, well, we can, there's ways to find out if that's true. Okay, now if these two are true, does the conclusion follow? And there's ways to find that out. Even if the argument's not put into a valid form, we can rework the argument and put it into uh, a valid form, make it a formal argument, and you'll know how to do that eventually. But it seems to be a good argument. You get the basics now, what you do. You find the premise and conclusion, zero in on the premise. That's all for this video. Stay tuned for more.